Hello everyone and welcome on and for something just a little bit different. While the best players in the world are battling it out in the desert heat of Doha, we're going to take a trip here to cold Cork, where it's not quite wet and windy like some of our viewers might have heard about Stoke City, but we are going to get some very good games on the line. The playground for today is of course Turner's Cross, home of Cork City and a historic home at that. Speaking of history though, we are going to make some history today with the first ever Bring Your A Game Cup where we have two teams taking part in a game of FIFA to battle it out to see who is the best duo in Ireland. But of course, to do that, we need some very special guests and our guest today taking on for team number one, team Kieran Walsh from Wild will be him joined by David Myler. He spent some time at Sunderland Hall City and he's also made multiple caps for Ireland. On the other side, of course, though, we have Tyrone Welly. Let's hope Welly isn't based on his style of football, by the way, where he just hoofs it over the sideline and he'll be joined by Stephanie Roach. Yes, the score of that goal that was up for the Puskas Award and she's also made multiple caps for Ireland as well. 58, if I'm not wrong. She currently plies her trade for Piemont. So, what is on the line? Well, like I said, it is the Bring Your A Game trophy, the inaugural one, of, one that we're ever going to see. And these players, of course, are hoping to get their name on it. So, with that, though, we also need a special guest. And the person joining me today will be a little bit more talented than me. His football resume is way more impressive. But before the grand reveal, we're going to jump to a quick ad break. Every player has that one thing they need to compete at the highest level. What's yours? Bring your A-game with 99.9% .9 broadband reliability. Virgin Media. Bring on amazing. So welcome back everyone and like I said our guest joining me today is just a little bit better at football than myself Not only is he better than myself, but he also does a little bit of work for Virgin Media. Welcome in Damien Delaney How are you doing Damien? Pretty good. Happy to be here. Yes, yeah, so you've got a pretty impressive career so far You know you played over in the Premier League You've made caps in the League of Ireland for Cork City as well as well as representing your country at the highest level Not only that You've done a little bit of work for Virgin Media. You do the Champions League and Irish Internationals. Esports, though, is that something that you ever thought that you'd be applying your trade to? No, absolutely not. Um, this is a new thing for me. Um, I've never done it before, but I'm really looking forward to it. I've heard so much and I've learned so much today from the guys and um, telling me how, mo how important their practice is, how much time they put into it. Um, and obviously Virgin giving them the platform to do that. So I'm looking forward to it. I, do you know something? I'm the same. I'm really looking forward to these games. But the thing is, it is esports. Yeah. And it is a little bit different, yeah. you know. But at the same time, these players, they are professionals. They do this eight, nine hours a day, similar to yourself. How important do you think it is for esports players to have a professional attitude and a professional mindset? Look, in any walk of life or any industry, if you want to get good at something, you have to practice at it. Nobody's born good at anything. Everybody has to put the hard yards in and the time and the effort, the dedication, the perseverance. Um, and these guys made it to the top of their field. So I've no doubt the amount of time and effort that they've put in. So they have to be commended for that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Now, one question I do have, Damien, is you played for Crystal Palace. A lot of the players on that side, I know for a fact, are very <laughs> into their FIFA. Yeah. When FIFA games came out, was there talk in the dressing room when it came to players' stats, players' ratings? Like, you know, you're a bit of a pace merchant yourself. So, uh... <laughs> yeah, listen, absolutely. Um, it was a very big thing, those cards, when they came out with pace. And, and I, I know for a fact certain players phoned up and complained that those stats weren't <laughs> quite correct. Some of them felt they were quicker than what they were. Um, I can honestly tell you I've never even looked at, at my one. Um, but um, look, I e, don't. E, e, don't. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. Um, but I can tell you, e -game, or gaming, was, was really, really big. Um, there was a period uh, in, in the Premier League where all of a sudden portable uh, monitors with PlayStations were on the bus and lads had headphones on. Um, and I think that was the day that, that card schools were finished and it became about FIFA and team games, um, which is when I was glad that I retired. Yeah, that's the kind of question I have is when you're a professional footballer, you are going to have downtime, you know, when you're playing away games or, you know, before games. 
was gaming something that a lot of the players would have done? Like, would there be a bit of you know squad building in that sense from gaming? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know for a fact um, the lads uh, after training were talking about heading home and what time were they logging on at, and obviously I had to find out what was going on. And they were logging in to play team sports hmm. together, and they had their headsets. Um, so it was uh, a, a prominent part of, of the game, especially towards the back end of my career. As I said, you know, you're on planes and buses for long periods of time, and before people would play cards or people mm. would chat or whatever it was, but then these consoles started appearing on the tables and the buses, um, and guys were, were, were big, to, big into it. Yeah, it's scary because I know a lot of the people here who might actually be involved in just playing FIFA in general. Sometimes you come across pro players with their special 99 overrated cards. So you do know that there is a lot of interest in it. But Damien, looking at today's games, it's a best of three series. So yeah. the teams are going to play each other three times. Yeah. To win the tournament, you need to win two of those games. What do you think the keys of success are for these sides tonight? Um... I think a good pairing, you know, your partner needs to be strong. Obviously, the two guys mm -hmm. uh, are professionals uh, or as close to professional as you're going to get. <laughs> um, so I think it's all going to come down to our special guests <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and who, uh, who puts in the best performance um, over that. And, um, you know, looking at the, the history and, and I think experience is a big part of it as well. Um, and I think Dave carries an awful lot more experience than, <laughs> than Stephanie. So if I was a betting man, I know I'd be putting my money. Well, we will find out pretty soon, but we are going to have a little bit of a talk, two or two sides. So first off will be Team Kieran. They were called Team One, but I've, I've called them Team Kieran. I hope, hope everyone's okay with that over on the side. But we're going to jump to a quick break, and when we come back, we'll talk to the two players competing for Team Kieran. You know, it's just a, it's another professional sport. If you look at another athlete, they have all their equipment, they train, they compete. I have my equipment, I have my controller, my monitor, my broadband. You need to be healthy, you need to be physically fit. We, we did PT sessions, we talked to nutritionists. Any athlete does a, a warm up before they compete, so esports athletes should do the exact same. And welcome back, everyone, to team K to the game. And up first, we've got Team Kieran. So, Kieran, we've got David Myler, two very skilled FIFA players, from what I've been led, led to believe. So, Kieran, first off, we're here in Turner's Cross. What's it like to play in the in the stadium? Yeah, it's a, it's amazing. Uh, look, uh, this is where you want to play these big games, big moments. Obviously, a lot of history here with the with the actual football team in Cork City FC, and uh, you know I represented them in the League of Ireland, so it was kind of that was my first big tournament. Uh, it's like a, a full circle moment to come back here and to to now have this match today. Yeah, it's one of the things about this broadcast that we keep noticing is Cork City comes up quite a bit, as David will talk about a little bit later. But for this game, there's some bragging rights at stake. You're taking on not only a teammate, but a rival for Tyrone. So how much prep have you done about his style of play and what you can maybe do to win this one? Yeah, no, I, I've been keeping an eye on him now and uh, I've been putting in the hours practicing over the last few days uh, with this in mind. Obviously, I know David is a, is a good FIFA player himself, so uh, I was happy to be fair enough with him. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I think, uh, I think we'll take Tyrone down. <laughs> and what are the expectations there? Are you going for a Team Kieran win? Oh, well, 100%. Yeah, yeah, no, without a doubt. I think once we, once we get warmed up and start getting settled into the games, I think, uh, I think we, can, we can run riot. Yeah, so one last question before we jump to David is, I pointed it out already, your teammates, you both play for Team Wild, but it's a very different side of sports where you're teammates, but you're also rivals. What's it like living in that kind of world where not only do you have to like, look after each other all the time as mates, but you're also competing against each other for the same things? Yeah, it's difficult, and uh, you know you're fighting against each other, and you know for in tournaments and for opportunities and things like that. But I think because you know me and Tyrone are both great players, I think we push each other on to be to be that much clearer the rest of the competition. And I think that's really good to have someone that's that's on that top level with you to to drive you on to be better overall. Yeah, well, speaking of the top level, we're going to talk to David Myler next. So. There's a lot of pressure being put on you already. You know, Kieran has said that you're very good at FIFA. Uh, I've heard it from a couple of members of the staff that you're very good at FIFA as well. I have watched your Twitch streams, so I'll not give my opinion just yet, but how excited are you for tonight's games? Well, I want you to give your opinion now. Let's 1v1 later and we'll see what it's like. Oh, that's no problem. <laughs> well, look, this is your old stomping ground. You played here for a while. What's it like to be back? Does it give you that feeling of being at home? It does. It's obviously very strange. Um, even as I come through, my earliest memories of coming here as a child, coming to watch Cork City with my dad. And then I came back with my schoolboy club, College Corinthians, to play in cup finals. And obviously I represented Ireland here um, in 2016 before the Euros. To now come back to play FIFA at a place that's four or five miles from home is 
It's a bit strange, but it's it's something when I got the phone call and asked to do it, I was I jumped at it and uh, I'm excited and you know I'm looking forward to when the FIFA starts. Yeah, so Damien spoke a lot in the pre-show about you know gaming, the gaming culture when it comes to football. How did you get into gaming? Was it a case of you played along with the teammates or did you kind of grow up gaming? I grew up gaming. Um, it's something I've done from such a young age. I remember I, I was fortunate to get a PlayStation uh, for one of my birthdays when I was younger. And I kind of got into it and I played with all my friends. Obviously, then when I moved to England, I had a lot of downtime, as most professional footballers do. Some go down different avenues of going out or getting into horse racing and what have you. I gamed an awful lot. Um, and I kind of got to the point where I was playing against my friends back home and I wanted to beat them comfortably. So I entered into foot champions and weekend league to try and improve myself. The next one, and I knew during titles FIFA 17, 18, 19, I was in the top 100 in the world. Um, then you've got young pu young pups like these lads coming up, which is uh, ever ever moving, and they're they're getting better and better, and they put an awful lot of time and dedication into it. I've got two young kids myself, so I don't have as much time to put in, but I still play quite a bit. Yeah, I don't know if anyone's seen it, but off camera when you said you were in the top 100 in the world, Stephanie just went. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what she's quite got herself into with this one, but in addition to gaming, you do a lot of streaming. Yeah. So, you know, you pride yourself on that. And one of the things that people who stream pride themselves on is their presentation and their background. You've got a pretty special one. You've got jerseys in the background from, you know, people you've played against and done swaps with. Out of all the jerseys you have, what's your most prized possession in that room? Oh, I've got 16 shirts up, um, all different. You've got Hazard, Pogba, um, David Silva, Yaya Torre, Steven Gerrard, Frank Lampard, Paul Scholes. But my favourite one of the lot would be Lionel Messi's. I know I'd never played against Messi, but a friend of mine played against Messi in the Champions League and I asked him to get me the shirt and he got me his shirt. Messi's my favourite player. Um, he's incredible. For me, in my opinion, he's the best of all time. Some may disagree. Any United fans watching would probably pick Ronaldo, but um, that shirt is my, you know, it's my most prized possession. So you're telling me that Damien Delaney is not your favourite footballer of all time? I actually, for a long period of time, I did have shirts in my house up and Damien's Crystal Palace shirt was there. I still have it all framed up and that, but the wife wanted him out of the house and into my office. But I still have Damien's shirt. I don't know if he's still got mine, but I've got his. I'll ask him when he's back on the screen. So final question before we talk to the other team is... Obviously, professionalism is something that has really become prevalent in esports these days. How much do you think that professional mindset and you know work life, you know life balance, you know eating well, sleeping well? How much do you think that could maybe impact esports players as well? One hundred percent. Like Damien touched on it there at the top of the show. Like in order for them to get to the level where they are, they have to dedicate themselves. That's time, effort, the practice, like the long hours, they put that in. But there's also on the flip side that you need your rest and your recovery. You need that nutrition. Um, it's been well documented with you know, successful esports players and teams that they have to get the right sleeping schedules. They have to be eating correctly. You can't afford to be having fast foods because you become sluggish. And obviously they want to be sharp, they want to be alert. These games are fast tempo, you know, they average 12 minutes for a full game. You have to be alert for that because at their, at their level, the smallest mistake could cost you a place in a tournament, it could cost you the tournament. So th those small little details matter enormously. So I imagine throughout the entire work, they're probably focusing on all assets of how to be a professional and how to, you know, maintain that level. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. And with esports players as well, performance is where most of the money and prizes come from. So that was Team Kieran. But we're going to jump into a quick, a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk to t Team Tyrone. For every gamer and every esports player, you need to put in a lot of hours, a lot of grind. You need to have some amount of natural ability, but it, it will never just carry you through. I mean, uh, professional gaming is so competitive. You need to be fully focused. I think you need a lot of mental toughness. I train. I practice, I get better, and I compete. So, Team Tyrone up next, which is a strange one for me to see as a proud Donegal man. Uh, but anyways, we do have Tyrone here, joined by Stephanie. How are you guys doing? Grand, yeah. I think I have a lot to worry about now after hearing David's in the top 100 FIFA players. I wasn't told that before I got here, but looking forward to it. Yeah, but he's never scored a goal that's been up for the Puskas Award, so you can always hold that one against him. And Tyrone, for you as well, it is a case where you're playing against your teammate. You heard him talking, he's done his research on how you're playing. How do you feel as the number one rated player in Ireland to be taken on your teammate along with someone as good as Stephanie Roach? I feel confident going into today. Um, just like 
Mr. Welly, like he's, he's second best in Ireland, but I know I'm the best and we're going to win this game today. I like those confident words. So we are here at Turner's Cross, one of the you know biggest stadiums in the League of Ireland. What's it like for you to get a chance to play a game of FIFA inside one of these hallowed grounds of football? It's amazing. I've done it before. I went to Portugal to play in the Benfica Stadium, so I've been here before. Um, but it's honestly so surreal, and I can't wait to get going. And I think one of the big things about this event is it is being picked up by one of the big national broadcasters with Virgin Media. How cool for you as an esports player is it to see a national broadcaster in Ireland finally take some interest in esports? Yeah, it's mad. Like it's it's good for the country, and hopefully esports can kick on in Ireland because no one even really kind of knew about it or followed it. But now hopefully they will do. Yeah. So that's a the question. And you spoke about nobody in Ireland really yeah. talking about esports. Grandparents, you know, people in your little town. When you tell them you're a professional, you know, professional gamer, you work in esports. What sort of a reaction do you kind of get? They kind of wouldn't believe you at first. They'd be like, oh, is that the actual game FIFA? And you have to tell them then. But hopefully they'll know now. Well, there you go. And I want to talk to you, Stephanie, a little bit. So I think that goal that we spoke about a few times already did so much for Ireland, and in particular, women playing football and sports in Ireland. Whenever you've kind of been playing for your country, one of the big things for you is being an idol for kids growing up. What advice would you have to maybe young people in Ireland looking to get involved with sports, whether it be traditional sports or esports? Um, I think just go for it. I think the good thing nowadays is that more boys and girls are playing sports and more boys and girls have been encouraged to play sports. And um, for me growing up, I just had really male role models. So I think now to have young boys and girls having more female role models as well is good. Um, but yeah, I think just, just, and as the guy said before, if you really want to do well at something, you've got to work hard and you've got to be dedicated to it. So if just something you want to really be good at, you've got to go and, and give it your best shot. You definitely do. So gaming then, let's talk a bit about that. Do you game much yourself, Stephanie? Is it something you're into? To be honest, I, I grew, when I was growing up, I used to play all the time. My cousins and my brothers used to play tournaments of FIFA together and I played quite a lot. But obviously with work and college and everything else you go through as you're growing up, I kind of got away from it a little bit. And um, the last couple of months, I kind of got back into it a little bit more. So I'm obviously not as experienced as the guys. I'm hoping I won't be that bad that I let Tyrone down. Obviously, he's speaking really positively, so uh, hopefully I'll be able to, to hold my own. But um, yeah, as I said, not quite as often as I used to, but definitely have a little bit of interest in it. So we touched a little bit on FIFA stats when we were talking to Damien. And this is I'm going to put you on the spot. If, if you were to put yourself in FIFA or create your own card, what sort of stats would you give yourself? What do you think would be the highest or what do you think you could work on? Um, I suppose my finishing would probably be good, wouldn't it? Um, I think that's obviously as a forward, that's kind of what I'd, I'd base it on. I think from what you said to Damien, I'm guessing you're saying his pace is going to be slow. I reckon my pace wouldn't be that high either. Um, I think my, my brain works faster than my feet, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I'd say probably my finishing would be the best, I hope. <laughs> I'd say so. It'd definitely be up there. So it is 2v2s. You know, it's not your traditional 1v1 game. I know that the two guys from Wild have experience playing in 2v2s before. But you've got to say, teamwork probably has a lot more of an impact on this in communication. How excited are you to play in this game? And are you going to be working really hard on those in-game comms? Or will we hear some, some complaints? Yeah, I'm hoping to kind of keep my emotions to myself, but uh, I think we were talking about it earlier, and obviously Ty Tyrone's the best in Ireland, so I think it's going to be a case of if I'm playing with Messi, I'm going to give the ball to Messi, and Tyrone's going to be my Messi today, so I'm going to hopefully get the ball, pass it to him, and let him work his magic. Love it, absolutely love that. So that was Team Tyrone. We're going to bring in the one and only Damien Delaney just after this quick break to talk about this upcoming game a little bit more. It's a 99% mental game and 1% skill based game. You need to believe in yourself that you can win the big tournaments and that you can compete against the best players in Europe and the world. We have our internet broadband, our PS5, our gaming chairs, our monitors. We need that to bring our A game to the table and win as many games as possible. Welcome back on everyone. So Damien, we've spoken to both the sides. We've heard what they've had to say about the upcoming fixture. Based on what you've heard from both teams, do you think there's one that's maybe going to get the edge against the other? Uh, yeah, team, uh, team David, I think, as I said at the top of the show, I think experience is going to count for a lot. Uh, no disrespect to, to Stephanie, um, but I think if you've not put in the, the, the hours and, and, the, and the long, hard hours and late nights, and I think David's certainly done that. <laughs> so I think he's pretty adept um, at, his, uh, at his game. So um, I, I would have to go with team David, yeah. 
But one question, is that Corkonian bias or, or do you think we're, we're saying that from the heart? Well, the man just said he had my jersey on his wall um, and his jersey is um, on my wall as well at home. It's the only jersey on my wall. <laughs> so I had, to, I had to give him a shout for that. I love it. Well, look, it is a best of three. We spoke about that already. These teams are going to play each other in three matches where two will win the Bring Your A Game Cup in a best of three. I think mm. the main thing is if you lose the first game, it's not doom and gloom. So how important do you think that it is to get off to a good start? No, a start is everything in, in every sport, you know, so you want to win the first game. Um, but also if you do win the first game, you know, you know you're going to get a reaction from your opponent in the second game. Um, and then momentum is a big one. If, if, if your opponent can win the second game, tied at 1-1, then they've got the momentum going into the final game. So it can work both ways. Um, mm. But ultimately, I think the most talented team um, will come out on top over the case of best of three. In a one-off game, of course, anything can happen. You know, mistakes can be made. But I think when you're doing a best of three, you will always find the best. So... You spoke about the best teams and that several times. The games that we have coming up, they're obviously going to be influenced by not only the people that are playing, but they're going to be influenced by the teams that they put on mm -hmm. the pitch as well. Knowing what you know, we're not going to ruin the spoiler for everyone else yet by saying what teams will be playing, but knowing what you know, are there any of those matchups where you think, could be very one-sided based on the teams that are playing. No, I think, I think both, both teams, from what I can gather, they're, they're rated reasonably the same. Um, the first game is, is definitely going to bring back some nostalgia for, for a certain generation of, of people. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. But I think the teams are, are rated quite fairly. So again, it'll come down to whoever's the best team. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing who it is. Yeah, well, speaking of good teams, we are joined, as I keep saying, by Wilds. Now, we have one of the co-owners of Wild that we're going to talk to at some point so we can get to know a little bit more about this Irish organisation. So while I go run off and get myself ready for that interview with Steve, and we're going to throw up another video on the screen, and when we come back, we'll have an interview with Steve from Wild. Every player has that one thing they need to compete at the highest level. What's yours? Bring your A-game with 99.9% .9 broadband reliability. Virgin Media. Bring on amazing. Well, we are back and, you know, by the magic of television, we're in the stand here now at Turner's Cross and I am joined by Steve from Wild. So, Steve, we know each other quite well. This isn't, this isn't our first time no, no, bumping no. into each other. No, we've, uh, we've uh, known each other for probably... 18 months at this stage and it's been a it's been a pretty wild journey is that a pun is that was that was that on purpose bad one but it's uh, definitely on purpose i love it so let's talk about esports and iron a little bit wild's still a pretty new organization when it comes to esports so steve what gave you the inspiration to create the organization and then to go with the name of wild um so th there was a lot of thought that actually went into this wild stands for what you love doing um everybody assumes that the e stands for esports um it actually stands for empowerment excitement entertainment and everyone so what what wild was formed to be was to be an all-inclusive all irish-based esports organization that wanted to compete and is competing on the global stage yeah, speaking of competing on the global stage, you have a team that's doing pretty well right now. They're going to take arms in a big tournament next week. But we're here to talk about FIFA. And the two lads that you've signed, you're obviously very excited about it. Tyrone and Kieran are very, very good, talented Irish players. I want to know how it came to be that they signed for Wild and how important it is for you to have Irish players representing the org. It's, it's really important. Um, we identified both Tyrone and Kieran. 18 months ago uh, when Wild was launched. Um, and we've put a lot of time and effort and energy. Um, they've worked with uh, fitness um, PT, uh, psychologists. Uh, they, they were lucky enough to work with Bernard Dunn in the early stages. They've had interactions with our chief of inspiration, Usain Bolt, um, and we've helped them develop. Um, they competed in the first inaugural E-League of Ireland. And, and luckily for us, even though there were, you know, half a dozen or nearly a dozen competitors, they ended up against each other in the final. So there's, there's a good competitive rivalry between the two of them. And they continue to develop as, as athletes because they're training really hard and are, are hungry to succeed. Yeah, it's, it's something I got to say is they are performing very well in the scene. And I think there's definitely been growth since they've joined the org as well, because obviously it's, it's down to the org to give these players the platform to get better every day. Speaking of platforms and improving, though, you've recently opened up the Wild Academy, which I know is a bit of a passion project for yourself. 
Yeah, so um, we've been very fortunate to, to power with Virgin Media um, and we, we worked and built a relationship with them over the last 18 months and, and something that's really important to us and them is, is empowering talent um, and having a physical base on this island that facilitates um, people to see what's possible if they, if they commit to um, it, commit to esports and train hard enough, but also uh, a physical base where our professional teams as well as aspiring talent can come and train. Okay, so you touched on Usain Bolt a little bit earlier. Usain Bolt, obviously, he has a bit of a soft spot for Ireland. I know that over the past he's been here a few times. How did he, how did that connection come up? Because it's not one you'd expect to see every day. So Usain actually has never been to Ireland, but, but we're working on that. Um, so stay tuned for that one. Um, he wanted to align with an esports organization. Um, and there, there are certain things which I mentioned before, which are really important to him and us in terms of empowering youth and talent, uh, exciting fans and competing at the highest level in terms of competition. Um, we, we, we worked with him over a period of time, building that level of trust uh, and a relationship. Um, and he aligns with what we're doing. Um, he wants to try and empower talent and, and use what he's done to do that. Um, and he sees the, the direction of travel in terms of esports, um, being at the Commonwealth Games this year, um, being at Invis Invictus Games, and, and recently there was an announcement in terms of the Olympic movement and, and esports aligning much more readily. But, but on, not only that, in terms of just the competitive scene that's happening in esports around the world, it, it, it's really exciting. And, and Darren, you've seen parts of the world that you never thought you were going to see over the last 12 months. Yeah, and hopefully I'll get to see a little bit more. But before we wrap up, I have two more questions for you, Steve. The first one, next two to three years, what's your vision for esports in Ireland? Um, I, I think if, if we're successful um, and, and find great partners like Virgin Media that can showcase the talent that's on this island, I think it'll provide pathways to people to really believe in terms of going and chasing their dreams um, and trying to compete at the highest level in, in whatever title that they... Um, that they feel most comfortable in. So now the last question I have, and this is going to be a tough one for you as the org owner, because I'm basically going to ask you to choose between like two of your children, you know, two, something that you probably know people find tough to do, but Team Kieran or Team Tyrone? I was actually going to say that if I was going to bet on who's going to win tonight, I'd probably put a bet on England. Um, I, I think between, I think Wild are going to do pretty well tonight. <laughs> and I think I'll, I should leave it there or else I'm going to get in trouble. Okay, so there you have it. We're not going to get any hot text from the owner of Wild. But look, the time for talking about tonight's games is over. We're going to get ready to walk our players in ahead of this fixture. Every player has that one thing they need to compete at the highest level. What's yours? Bring your A game. 99.9% .9 broadband reliability. Virgin Media. Bring on amazing. have it on the hollow turf of Turner's Cross. We have our teams taking the field of play. Team one, Team Kieran will be him and Stephanie Roach joined by Tyrone, who will be playing along with David Myler. So the question is, have these players brought their A game ahead of tonight's games? Well, the time to talk is over. Let's have our players take their seat, pick up their controllers and get ready to game. Every player has that one thing they need to compete at the highest level. What's yours? Bring your A game with 99.9% .9 broadband reliability. Virgin Media, bring on amazing. So guys, here we are. Game number one is at the ready, where we have Ireland taking on Romania. Any thoughts going into this one? Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, looking forward to getting settled in, getting those first few passes and things off. Uh, yeah, I think once we and David get into a bit of a rhythm, we start figuring out what we're going to do. Uh, I think we can uh, we can really push on from there and, and start hammering in a few goals. So people would always say that the hardest thing about any game is actually getting on the pitch. You know, once you're there, things get a little bit easier. Do you think it's going to be the same here, David, or do you think that the hardest part's yet to come? The time for talking is done. 
Yeah. Yeah, here we'll look. That's team one. We're going to move over and have a chat to the competitors once more. So, Tyrone, you're sat down. It's very intimate here now. You know, a little bit more intimate than we were before. How are you feeling about this fixture? Very confident. Very confident. We're going to go in, attack, score goals, win. And like David said, it's time to go. Less talking. Well, there you go. So, Stephanie, I've asked the same question to David. Is it going to be easier once we get up and running, or do you think that this is the hard part now? Well, I feel like the lads have been putting me off all day, so I don't go back into Lewis, have I, <laughs> at this point? <laughs> so, Team 1, we'll talk a little bit about Ireland. They're going to be one of the teams taking part in this game. Who do you think the, the most important player on this Ireland side is going to be? Jesus, I don't know. <laughs> Having a clue, none of them, because they're not going to score one goal and we're going to win the game. An easy clean sheet. I predict 3 0 first game. 3 0 first game. So, based on how confident you're saying, even though it's a best of three, you think this one's going to be wrapped up after two? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. The man, a few words, but he's pretty confident. So, while our players get their lineups up and running, we are going to get ready to kick into game number one. So welcome back everyone to this game. So I'm joined again by Damien Delaney. Damien, you spoke about the nostalgia yeah. of this fixture, Ireland against Romania. For maybe some of the viewers at home, you know, because the esports viewers are a little bit younger than maybe some of the other people who could be watching. Why is Ireland Romania such a big fixture? Um, Ireland played Romania, Italian 90, uh, seminal kind of tournament or moment for myself growing up as a, a nine year old boy in Cork. Um, uh, the name Timofte, who was the goalkeeper for Romania uh, at the time, was probably a name that will be etched uh, in my name forever. And that famous Packy Bonner save. Um, I believe that they're playing the current Ireland team and the current Romanian team, but still, whenever you hear Ireland v Romania, it brings back memories of Ireland against Romania at Italian 90. Well, you spoke about that Packy Boner save as being mm. something you always remember. I'm a proud Donegal man, yeah. Packy Boner from that part of the world. My first big World Cup memory was the Robbie Keane goal against Germany, where Shea Given, another Donegal man, was yeah. in goal. But speaking of the Ireland teams that have been playing over the years, we're looking at the current version of that squad now. You've got to say there's a lot of reason for, sh you know, for some optimism. You know, the players might be rated too highly today in the game, but there's definitely a lot of talent in that squad. Absolutely. Ireland are always uh, adept at producing uh, players that, 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 that can equip themselves on the world stage. You know, look back through our history, we've always produced players. Um, at the moment now, it's just about getting it in the right shape and hopefully the results will come and we can get back qualifying for major tournaments. And Romania then? We're talking about their side, a little bit of the dark horse maybe going into this game. Written pretty similar to Ireland, mm. but obviously being, you know, living and working in Ireland, we're going to be a little bit more familiar with the teams on the Ireland sheet. Yeah. How much do you think that could be difficult for Team 2 with setting up the Romania side? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I think the guys are going to set the team up how they want. You know, you won't be, be, be stuck with a, a Romanian type team as their guys are beavering away there in the background, setting their teams up. That's exactly what they will be doing. But ultimately, it's up to the guys with the controllers in their hand because they're the ones that control the players. The ratings are, are, are very, very similar. So I, I, I imagine that uh, the, the four lads there um, will have to take responsibility. There'll be no finger pointing or blaming here. So then team one is obviously Ireland. We're going to be a little bit biased. You know, we're on cast. We have to be biased. We have to support team yeah, Ireland to yeah. win this one. How important is a good start? Because obviously, you know, from FIFA, getting in behind nice and early can have a big impact, same as it would be in real football as well. How important do you think it is for these teams to come out of the traps running? Yeah, pretty, pretty important, but, but also listening to um, uh, the, the, the two professionals talking, you know, tactics are going to play a huge part, mm -hmm. you know, which, which is something you, you wouldn't necessarily think or, or naturally think, but the boys were talking about systems uh, outside. I was overhearing what they were saying, and they were talking about 4 2 three, ones and wingers and, and players coming inside, so it's obviously a huge part of what they do. Um, and, and any modern football, especially any... Uh, system you pick is, is trying to establish dominance, you know, you're trying to create numerical advantage, advantages, that's what we when I do the Virgin Champions League games mm -hmm. uh, it, it, that's what we look for and by the very sounds of it, that's exactly what they do as well, so uh, both teams are going to have to pick their formation and then it's about establishing dominance and dominating the ball and creating as many chances as possible and then scoring Well, that is the key, now 
Speaking of chances, we're going to take this chance to jump into a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about the game. Every player has that one thing they need to compete at the highest level. What's yours? Bring your A-game with 99.9% .9 broadband reliability. Virgin Media, bring on. Amazing. You know, it's just a, it's another professional sport. If you look at another athlete, they have all their equipment, they train, they compete. I have my equipment, I have my controller, my monitor, my broadband. You need to be healthy, you need to be physically fit. We, we did PT sessions, we talked to nutritionists. Any athlete does a, a warm up before they compete, so esports athletes should do the exact same. Every player has that one thing they need to compete at the highest level. What's yours? Bring your A-game with 99.9% .9 broadband reliability. Virgin Media, bring on amazing. And we are back and we are getting ready to jump into the game. Our two teams are just doing the final little bits to edit their sides ahead of the fixture. But Damien, I want to take this little moment to talk about professional football. You spoke about you know, strategy and mm. tactics. Mm. You played centre half mm -hmm. at an incredibly high level through all your career, which means apart from the goalkeeper, you see yep. more of the football than anyone else when you're looking forward. How important is communication and being able to adjust those tactics during the game and being a leader on the field? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, the, the guys with the controllers in their hands, you know, they're the players, but they're also the managers. Mm -hmm. If they feel that there are numerical advantages being created and they're getting overloaded in certain areas, they have to think on their feet while also playing the game. I suppose managers are, are, are stood on the sideline, they can see it happening and they have time to change it. Um, but I suppose as an experienced uh, player, myself when I was playing, playing at centre-back, you can see everything. Maybe you can make some slight adjustments or, or, or be vocal with your communication. And I think communication between these guys both teams tonight is going to be very, very important. Um, but as I said, these guys have an awful lot on their hands tonight. And um, we're looking forward to seeing how it pans out. Can't wait. Cannot wait. I really cannot wait. And they're just doing the final little changes. So you spoke about playing against very good players. Mm. These are the top two players in Ireland. But you played centre half in the player Premier League. You played centre half mm. for Ireland. You've played against some of the best players in the world. Who has been the biggest handful out of any player you've ever played in your career? Uh, yeah, it's a question I get asked uh, uh, quite a bit. The most difficult one I probably ever played against was Luis Suarez in, mm -hmm. uh, I think it was 2014 for Liverpool when he scored uh, all those goals. He had an amazing season for Liverpool, um, but he was just ultra aggressive, um, you know, very, very, very hard working, very, very dedicated player. Um, and he didn't get a moment's peace. So he was probably the most difficult um, that I found to play against um, in my career. And obviously, the, 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 the neat and tidy, tricky wingers as well were, were very, very difficult. So, um, you know, uh, I suppose that list could go on quite a while because there was quite a few players gave me some problems. <laughs> well, look, I think one of the best things about playing for Crystal Palace at the time was you got to practice your defending. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was good times, though. You spent a lot of time in the Premier League. You were part of the success that they've been mm -hmm. having. You know, I can't remember for the life of me the last time they weren't playing mm -hmm. in the Premier League and you had a big mm -hmm. part to do with that. So you would have played in a lot of very good venues in your time in the Premier League. What's your favourite place to play football in and why? Um, well, I suppose if you ask me for a Premier League ground, um, I'm big on history, you mm -hmm. know, and, and, and growing up as a kid, watching Premier League, you know, stadiums like Old Trafford, Anfield, mm -hmm. um, you know, they hold a huge, huge kind of significance in my life because I watched so many great games there and then the, those venues are spoken about in such high regard so whenever I got to go to those types of stadiums um, it was very very special to me but if you were to pick one stadium that you could play in it would have to be Wembley um, mm -hmm. as an arena, um, that new stadium. Um, I was fortunate enough to play there a number of times in some, some important games. Um, but to play in that stadium in 90,000 people where there's so much at stake um, was, um, was pretty special. Uh, and as a venue, it's, it's got to be up there with the best in the world. It definitely is. And that's the thing too, when you're playing in a venue like that, it's not a 80-20 crowd split like mm. you would have in a regular Premier mm. League game. It was a 50-50 mm. split. How did that leave the, mat the atmosphere in those games? Because obviously it's probably very different than playing a regular home or away game. Yeah, look, the team I played for, Crystal Palace, had very, very vocal fans. You know, mm -hmm. they're very, very colourful. They put a lot of effort and a lot of time into into creating flags and, and, and a certain atmosphere. Anyone that's been to Selhurst Park uh, will know that. So to walk out and to see, as you said, the 50-50 split uh, was incredible. I was always very proud of our fans, though. Mm -hmm. 
definitely our Crystal Palace fans do make quite a bit of noise. But look, the time for talk is over. Our players are ready to get jumped inside of this game. So we have it. Romania taking on Ireland. Damien, you've went for a you've said it's going to be an Ireland one? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think so. As I said, experience is going to play a huge role here tonight. Stephanie's looking at me again. I feel like we're, we're <laughs> I feel like we're almost bullying Stephanie at this stage. <laughs> but this is the thing, you keep speaking about Stephanie. She's obviously had a massive impact on the women's game. Yeah. And you look at media coverage over the last year or two as well. Yeah. It's right at the forefront yeah. now again. And for, you know, young girls who want to be professional mm -hmm. footballers, it's a fantastic time. Mm. Well, um, any, any, any sport that wants to improve. Oh, I am. we're off. We're ready to go. We're rolling. So look, normally with these things, Damien, we'd be very professional. We have a bit of fun. But I think we're going to have fun with this cast. So <laughs> yeah. if you see anything that's going wrong, feel free to tell the viewers. All right. So one thing I will say is you've got two, two players playing in a duos format. So with that, communication is key. You don't want two players taking two different center halves and chasing down the same player. So with this being a very open little venue that we have here at Turner's Cross. Oh, these oh hang on, hang oh. on. Ireland have given it away a couple of times in this. They've turned over possession. <laughs> over, <laughs> over playing in their own half. Oh. So chance now running down the wing, but there's nobody in the box. They're looking to get Obafemi making a run, but the ball is played inside. Pass is played in, but no, it's going to go straight back to the goalkeeper. But all the action so far, Damien, coming down that left wing. Yeah, absolutely. Lovely little move there by by, uh, by Ireland, working it well into Callum Robinson, trying to neat and tidy reverse pass into the feet. Didn't quite come off, though. And here come Romania now on the attack. Ball one back with Ireland now with space to drive into and they've got a bit of an overload here. You've got a player oh, free a spare player in, in the, middle. the middle of the box. 2v2. There's the pass played again. Oh, but it's cut out and maybe just delayed Brilliant that pass defending. a little bit too long. Brilliant defending. Read it. They were caught in a 3v2 against there. Um, fair play to Romania. They, they spotted it in another. There you go. Look, you got 4v4 here on the edge of the box. Oh, that's a free kick. Oh. That's the edge of the box, that is. So one thing I've noticed already, Damien. Yeah. I'm uh, being very positive about the attack of plays, but you're obviously praising the defending as the free kick's about to be hit. Ball's played, oh, it's cut out, but is that a little bit of bias oh. as we have our first goal of the game? Seamus Coleman. Got to go, man. No, oh, well done, yep. Seamus. What a player. I tell you, it was an interesting routine there with the, 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 the quick free kick or the short free kick on the edge of the box. I was fully expecting a shot, but they worked it really well. Ball falls away to get a little bit fortunate there and Seamus swings the right leg at it and 1-0 Ireland. It's always been known to have that goal scoring touch, hasn't yeah, he, or, or, or kicking the flag with a celebration as mm -hmm. well. Seamus isn't that type. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's one of those things. He's a player that I think you definitely want in your Ireland squad in FIFA because he does bring some very good defensive stats into the game. It's something I think most Ireland squads have had down the years is a pretty solid defensive line. Yeah, absolutely. We always produce really, really good centre-halves. We always produce really, really good goalkeepers as well. And here come Ireland again. It's pretty one-way traffic at the moment. Romania need to start hanging in there, get a grip of this, get some possession. Ball played forward again, but Seamus Coleman is there to cut that one out as it makes its way into the centre circle. He's got a man out wide, so he plays at the Coleman. He's got some support on the wing from Callum Robertson. Plays it into Obafemi, but he's just out-muscled as the two-man press comes in. But you look at Romania on the ball, Damien. There's not a lot of options. The Irish midfield is really pressed up. Yeah, I mean, in pretty much all the games have been played in this half. There. They're turning the ball over very, very cheaply. They work it really well again. Ah, so Benny, I think it was there with the shot. Good block. Yeah, Romania need to start getting hold of this, take control of this game because at the moment they're turning over one another time there in their, in their own half, only inviting pressure. A little bit of space, but the ball played will be cut out by Romania in the midfield and they work it out to the wing. There is a man running through the middle, but he will go offside, so the long ball can't quite be played just yet. And the ball is won by Ireland again on the midfield and Obafemi has a chance to go one-on-one -on -one with his man. Driving into the ball box, little ball roll, plays it inside to the middle, but the chance for a shot is gone, and it's once again a good bit of two-man pressing at the edge of the box. Yeah, I mean, you're getting numbers back there, crowding out Ireland. They're working really, really hard here, and they have an opportunity, ball given away by John Egan. Oh! oh. 
there was nothing else on though. He picked no, the ball up on the wing. He done brilliant. He won it back uh, out here on his near touchline and worked inside really well. Just couldn't quite squeeze it inside the post. Positive from Romania. Chance now for Romania again as they work it down the wing. The ball played over the top. Will find its way into the box, but it is very good defended from Collins to Cullen. Plays it forward now to Callum Roberts Robinson. He's got himself a man going down the line again. That is James McLean. And this is maybe an area where James McLean might have been more effective a couple of years ago in his career. Yeah, you saw that there where he checked out and went back to start again. James would normally just push that ball in a 1v1 situation out wide. Ah, wonderful stuff there from Collins. Great read, interception. Set Ireland off in the attack again. Callum Robinson now. Driving into the box. He's got a man coming inside. That is Obafemi. Obafemi with the shot, but it's well gathered in goal by Nietzsche there, the Romania goalkeeper. But it does seem like this Ireland squad as the ball is kicked straight out of play. It's a lot of the success that the Ireland are having, this team owner having in this game, is definitely using the width of the pitch. Yeah, I think so. The wingers are, are, are very, very prominent. Um, I think they're just having that extra pass again. A lot of possession on the edge of the Romanian box and they just seem to want that extra pass. I think you might be better off having a, a pot shot from distance. They're finding it hard to break down this Romanian team. They've settled well in fairness, Romania, after conceding that early opener. They've worked their way back into it. And they'll think they should be level with that shot that hit the post. Yeah, and they won the ball in midfield with a chance, but the ball's played forward too soon again. And it's just very easy for Ireland to build the play from the back. So Colin now, he's got a couple of men around him. So he's going to be forced to play it inside the Callum Robinson. Gets the run on the overlap again, but good defend him once more. The keeper can't quite stop that one from going out for a corner. So we're going to have our first corner of the game. Ireland opting to go short here. 2v1 out wide. Can they work an opportunity to get a shot away? There you go. Ooh. So with that, we have the end of the first half and David obviously get a little bit vocal. It's one thing I have noticed from the side is David gets very animated when things are going well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I think Romania will be happy with the way that game started. Um, I thought Ireland were going to run away with it, but they dug in, they hung in there and even worked the best chance of the half, really, when they hit that post. So here we see some fidgeting going on. Romania obviously seeing some tactical imbalances and they're going to try and level that up maybe they've recognized what you said there that ireland are having an awful lot of joy james mclean and ogbeni wide having an awful lot of joy out there maybe romania will do something to try and counteract that and, and, and get a foothold in this game notice a little change to the ireland setup too coleman's going to sit a little bit deeper this half and going to leave ogben up on the wing i'm sure Look, we're getting we're getting some abuse. We're getting some abuse here from from the players. Seamus is pushing on now. Maybe David's seen that, and Seamus doesn't quite have the legs he used to, so they're with a bit more of a withdrawn role. Ball one back again in midfield, but little collision as two players end up on the ground in Romania. We'll get the ball down the left wing. There's a run inside and it's well found. So now you have Russ driving towards the byline. He's got support inside, but he goes to cut it back to the edge of the box, and Ireland win the ball again. So 49 minutes gone on this one. What do you think of the way this game has been going so far? Yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty even, if I'm being honest with you. Um, there was a lot of talk before this dominance and, 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 and whitewashing and stuff, but Romania are very much in this, and, and they're on the attack here. Can he get a shot off there? A oh, bit of skill. Brilliant bit of skill. Oh, they've worked that brilliantly well done. <laughs> Steph, was that you? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I saw that with the pirouette there and the, the, the chop and the drag back <laughs> well, this excellent bit of skill there really really well I thought the opportunity had passed well the sides are level and Ireland making a couple of mistakes on the ball after that early one so Romania would need to take some advantage another good throw as they've got a chance to drive in towards oh, the box in again, in. it's chipped up the ball's taken down in the chest and it's oh. firing and just like that a 2-1 two, <laughs> no, two, lead having been a goal down only five minutes ago uh, yeah and that, that, that team Myler's quieting down a little bit there they're not <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, think, I think the changes at, uh, at half time, well done, Team Stephanie. They made some changes and got themselves right back in this game. So Ireland now find themselves 2-1 down inside of this game. Team Kieran with a little bit of work to do, but they have possession. 
They've got an overlap again. Seamus Coleman strays offside, but he's going to play it in through to Obafemi now instead, but he's only got one player to aim for on the box. Makes it to Coleman. Lays it to Josh Coleman at the edge of the box. Now James McLean maybe with a oh, chance. Oh, referee, that has to be... Uh, no. So, first free kick of the game, Damien, was a yeah, goal. Uh, looks like Seamus is... No, leaves it. Seamus McLean James with a shot. Yeah, that looked a little bit... Disjointed. I'm not sure they've worked on that one previously. Ah, oh, good save. Great effort. So 60 minutes on the clock now. 2-1 to Romania. And this game is Team Tyrone have a good lead. But the short corner team doesn't quite work. And chance now for Ireland to win the ball back. Cullen plays it in. But it's blocked. And it's recovered now by Kamora. The goal scorer for Romania. So Damien, as the ball just goes out for a goal kick. When you're 2-1 down in a game like this. Would you be rushing to change the tactics early on, or would you give it another few minutes and maybe start making oh, you, it? Up? You, you, you'd be looking to change it. I mean, you know, we spoke about the importance of getting off to a good start, um, especially if the the underdog wins the first game. Um, you could be under an awful lot of pressure, but uh, Ireland really haven't come out in the second half. They've been very, very, very defensive. So I'm not sure what changes they made at half time. I wonder. And here we go again. Some tactical changes from Ireland to try and get themselves back in and let's see what they do. Flat back, you know, 4-4-2 four, four, as well, uh, where it looks like it's a 4 triple 2 on the other side of things. Where do you think the 4-4-2 four, four, kind of lies when it comes to formations in football at the minute, Damien? Uh, listen, there's not many teams in world football play 4-4-2 four, four, anymore. Um, two central midfield players is very, very difficult to, to, to play in modern day football because if you don't have the ball, um, you know, it, it's very, very hard. So most teams now try to get three central midfield players in there. And maybe that's where Romania have got the upper hand with that numerical advantage in the middle of the park. But there's still time for Ireland. We'll see how these changes work out. So a little change from Romania as well as they oh. add more men at the back. But a chance now for Ireland as the ball's driven into the bottom left corner. And Obafemi puts it 2-2 as the tactical changes seem to have an instant yeah, I'm success. Not, I'm not sure happened to Romanian centre-backs there. Bowden disappeared out of shot and it was the easiest to pass into uh, to Obafemi and um, took his chance brilliantly. But here come Romania now. Ball robbed though by Marna midfield. L tries to play the ball off balance but it's won back by Ireland. Obafemi begins making a run, gets the ball to feet and now he's got... Ogben making the way down the wing and a man that's a man with plenty of pace to burn but he's running into a bit of a corner plays oh, it inside brilliant. Callum Robertson to Obafemi to Brown Brown shoots oh. Brown scores and Ireland 3-2 up brilliant looked like Ogbeni was running out of real estate alright Dave <laughs> looked like Ogbeni was running out of real estate but they worked down really well across the 18 yard box to create that opening and 2-1 down to 3-2 up in, in the space of 2 or 3 minutes brilliant and then David, obviously, with a little shush celebration to the side yeah, as well after that was, taking that was, that was more you than, than, <laughs> than me. So McLean now, with the ball at his feet, plays it into Brown once more as Ireland maybe look to take some of the sting out of this game by just keeping some possession. 15 minutes left to go, but as you know, Damien, in FIFA, those 10 minutes, they go by very quickly. Yeah, absolutely. Romania now need to gather themselves. There's still time for them. They need to get that ball back though, but here come Ireland again. They really have recovered well from going 2-1 down. Again, the centre-backs disappear. I'm not sure what Romania did in that tactical change just after 65 minutes, but the centre-backs have gone missing. Yeah, I don't think the plan has quite gone to the script here for no. Romania, but Team Kieran pretty happy. They have another chance down the wing, but McLean, the stamina bar is looking pretty low now as he goes to the outside of the foot and it just goes wide by a couple of feet. But that's another chance. Maybe the pass maybe was a better option. Yeah, I think so. But, it, you know, you really have to look at that Romanian defence. Gaping holes appearing in front of the, in front of the goal. Irish players having a, a free-for-all. Can Romania get one back? Well, there's a big hole here for Marion to run into, but Egan will get the foot in and win the ball back now for Team Kieran, who've just got five minutes to hold on with a 4-2 lead. Ball sprayed out to Coleman on the wing, plays it forward again to Ogben, who is just going to get tackled, but this will suit Ireland, the ball going out of the play. Absolutely, they've taken this thing out of this game. They, they got their lead, and now they're just maintaining possession. Romania look a little bit dispirited. 
Obafemi with the ball at feet, plays it forward again and just a chance to keep possession, but he tries to find the early pass and Romini, now you feel like the time is running out, but it's won back by Seamus Coleman. Switches the play over to McLean. Back inside now to Brown. And he's just going to sit, wait by this time. McLean goes through and goal. The ball's going to be saved, but it breaks. And it is a goal for Ireland. 5-2 as they look like they've all but yeah. sealed victory. Yeah, that, that's surely that now. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant from Ireland. Alan Brown getting the goal there, but really well worked move again. As you see, there's those big gaping holes. They really have lost an awful lot of players in the middle of the pitch. So I don't know what you know about FIFA, Damien, but that's probably one of the most FIFA goals I've ever seen in my life. Goalkeeper saves it, breaks to a striker in the open to tap it in. So teamwork after game one, as we just wait for the final whistle to blow, which just now has done. It does look like Ireland had the much better when it came to pressing and working as a team. Yeah, but I think, I think uh, Romania will be very, very disappointed having got their noses in front, worked really hard to get back in the game. I'm not sure I couldn't quite keep up, keep up with the tactical changes after 65 minutes, but whatever happened, Team Ireland got themselves back in it and um, convincing winners in the end. Yeah, very strong performance. Now, the big thing for me is the standard of the teams is going to go up now over the rest of the day because right. up next we've got the US Women's National Team taking mm -hmm. on the English Women's National Team. You get the feeling, though, that some of the chances that went unpunished in the first game they're definitely going to get punished this time around with a higher caliber of player on the pitch. I think so too, but but again, I can't help but, but think that it's it's tactics. Tactics are going to be huge um, and how these guys set their teams up to, to gain those advantages. But it'll be interesting now to see how um, how the lads react. You know, that was a pretty convincing thumping they took there, 5-2. So it'll be interesting to see how they react for the second game. Definitely will be. Well, we're going to jump and do a quick break and when we come back, we'll have a quick chat with the two sides after game one. Every player has that one thing they need to compete at the highest level. What's yours? Bring your A-game with 99.9% .9 broadband reliability. Virgin Media. Bring on amazing. So, Kieran, 5-2 scoreline against your uh, colleague uh, on the other side in game number one after he said it was going to be a 2-0 whitewash. How does it feel? Ah, yeah, look, it feels great. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think it kind of went as expected uh, when me and David got, uh, got a bit of a rhythm going, got a bit more chemistry on the pitch, we, we started to take over. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just hoping to put it to bed now, put the best of three series to bed in this game. Uh, there'll be no dramas here, like we're just going to finish the job and, and cement the trophy in, in this game. Well, that's very confident. David, changes were made around the 65th minute whenever you were trailing 2-1. It really had a massive impact on the game. For the viewers at home or anyone who might have missed, what, what changes did you make to the style of play? Well, obviously, we were ahead at half time and we looked to be more conservative. Obviously, we've got players going forward. We wanted to kind of keep them back in. But at the same time, then they pushed on and then we decided we we're going to push back on. Um, and then obviously, the, as you said in commentary there, the holes appeared. There was gaps there. We attacked. And when you get chances, you've got to take them in this game. What was it like playing when you can hear the two commentators who really don't know what they're talking about, talking about the gameplay? Oh, no, I was actually very impressed with the co-commentator. I'm not sure about the commentator. thought his analysis was very good. It was very accurate. Um, but he's well experienced and obviously playing and doing all of his work with Virgin. Um, there was a couple of comments came in our direction when we were 2-1 down, but we were always confident, obviously, throughout the duration of the match that we would come out on top. Well, that was Team Kieran. Let's move on over on the sofa to talk to Team Tyrone after what was a... Interesting game one. They said they were going to sweep this series 2-0 with a 3-0 victory in our first game of the night. That's, that comment didn't really age too well, did it? No, but then again, they got one or two lucky goals. I reckon they're not as good as what they're letting on. Um, and this game, hopefully, we can win. So, Stephanie, that game didn't quite go to plan. But I feel like you were the driving force for every good thing you did. <laughs> Does Tyrone really need to step his game up for this one? No, I think he held us there in the first game, to be fair. I was just fine on my feet, so second game now, I'm ready to go. Yeah, well, that's it. It is a best of three, so if you are at home, remember, the first game just gets you on to match point first. You still need to win another game to win the Bring Your A Game Cup. So any last words before we jump into USA Women's National Team against England? Just to look like you need it. 
I like it's confident words again. Well, look, we're going to jump back over to the desk. And when we come back, we'll have game number two of the day. So here we go, and the game will be played in Seattle as well, Stadium. I don't think you've had the uh, joys of playing in, in the past at the Crow's Nest, but it's uh, going to be the US women's team taking on England. Game number one, there was a bit of an Irish bias. Will there be a bit of a USA bias in this one? I think so, and I think the home advantage as well for the USA um, could prove the difference. Early chance here for the US. And uh, that's pretty good defending there from, from Bright as England come away now. So early on again, wing play seems to be the primary goal of these sides as they look to create gaps and make their way in behind, but the ball's going to be broken out. And, you know, the U.S. women's national team, they've had a lot of positive things in the past. And looking at the rating of these players that are on the field, this could be a very fun game to watch as Smith drives inside, but the ball will be won back and bronze will begin to uh, work. So bronze, that's funny. Most of your cards in FIFA, Damien, were around that level. <laughs> Is that good or not, bronze? Better than I would have been. <laughs> <laughs> so as we move on into this one Damien it's eight minutes gone not a lot of action really to talk about so far but there's a chance for England maybe to let go from range but strong defending again as they look to make it forward and really the pace of this game seems much higher than the previous yeah one. you can see the, the 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 difference in quality as USA worked this one really, really well in the nice little pocket of space England under pressure tucks inside brilliant can they get a shot off Oh, what oh, a great save. save. Excellent save. Uh, should be out for a corner and out to, to the US. First real chance of the game. Would you be worried about how much distance they were able to carry the ball there? Will they even have been forced to play a pass? Yeah, this is outrageous. This. <laughs> <laughs> Some, something's outrageous. I'm not sure what, but... Oh, oh wonderful. Chance. Great chance. Surely, yes. <laughs> 1-0 USA. Little fist pump there as they take the lead. and Team Kieran not happy about something. We'll have to find out after the game what took place there. But is it Team Kieran or is it just David? I don't know. David seemed unhappy, but... <laughs> Oh, no England, England, yeah, England at sixes and sevens there. Can't quite get organised. In fairness, quite fortunate. And it's a big start for the United States as well because at the end of the day... This is a best of three series. They lost the first series to Team Tyrone. So it's very important that they manage to scrape away the win here because we will see all three games. But if, if the US don't win this game, the last one just becomes a bit of a show match. Yeah, I, you know, the USA with the noses in front now. See if they can learn from the previous game where they got their noses in front and couldn't quite handle it and fell apart defensively. Good work again from, from Bright. England now trying to find a way back into this game. Oh, great pass out wide, but... They let the ball go through the legs, maybe trying to get some space and didn't quite work out there for England. No, you see Dave and Kieran having a little whispering session there, seeing what they can do to, to get back into this game because they've had no impact, impact on it so far. It's been all the US. Sullivan plays it through and there's oh, a chance brilliant. now. Oh, good defending again. So a Good high press again from the US, trying to win that ball back, trying to get some joy. Can England work it round? Oh, they win it back high up the pitch again. As I was saying, can England find a way to beat that press and find a way to, to land some blows on this USA defence? But comfortable stuff again from the US. The high press, we keep speaking about it. And I think one thing that real football, you know, like playing in the real pitch and playing in FIFA is that it can be very effective, the high press, Damien, but at the same yeah. time, it yeah. can put you under pressure if they beat yeah. that front line. Yeah, it leaves you exposed, and that's the risk-reward. Wonderful header there, but again, the US finding space down the wings with a great cross inside. Oh, big oh, chance. In. Not onside, 1v1. Surely has to be. Whoa. Well done, goalkeeper. I thought she could have took, it, it took that shot off a little bit earlier, could have carried it a bit further forward. Again, short corners seem to be very prevalent in, in this game, and why not when they leave it 2v1? Super effort there. Can't quite get it on target. 
that was a big chance there for England though to get yeah. that get the size level. Yeah, I think the USA look very, very comfortable in possession though. The way they're switching that ball around, one touch football, working it back inside, trying to get England to run around and patiently probing for those gaps. Well tidied up there. It's a poor pass there by England. Surely, that was a chance. That was definitely David anyway. <laughs> <laughs> thing is though we can't say anything bad about Tyrone or Kieran because the owner of the org is a few feet away from us I hope that wasn't him he'll be sacked in the war <laughs> <laughs> so chance now again for England the ball's played inside the keeper comes off the line bravely and wins that ball but England are starting to play themselves into the game and it, it yeah. looks like they're just being more calm in possession yeah they're starting to get a foothold in it in fairness to them but the US still defending resolutely again. Another turnover in the middle of the third of the pitch and they're off on the counter-attack now. Can she work a cross in? Have the USA got enough bodies in there? No. England now with the chances. The player runs them behind. There's the decision to be made for the right back. He'll X now to push in towards the ball carrier. Ball played inside. Now Hemp out on the wing has the chance to maybe whip in a cross. Little ball roll, but it's going to be won back by England again. But high pressure sees the USA win possession again. But just a couple the of minutes, a big couple of minutes now for Team USA. Can they get the half time with their noses in front? They've done really, really well in this first half. <laughs> Some allegations being made from the sofa about the clock and how it's being used up here for USA. But with a step over, there's a chance to play a ball through. Possession's retained, but England win the ball back. We're inside the 45th minute now as the one-minute clock comes up, and it looks like Team Tyrone will do well to see the clock out, because I don't know if you know, Damien, but there's just this thing in FIFA where you feel like, inside of added time, you're way more likely to concede. Yeah, I'm not sure who just... Yeah. I think the, the workers are blaming their tools here, Damien. Yeah, look, I think we're going to, to tactical steer. We'll try and keep up what's happening as both teams look to make changes. See if they can get the upper hand. England nearly, really do need to find a way to get into this game. The USA comfortable. Back four, back five for USA. Very, very comfortable. Never really any under pressure. Only that one opportunity. With the USA, certainly the high press is very, very good for them. Now, it was after this stage in game one where Team Tyrone came back from a 1-0 deficit to go 2-1 up, and then things kind of fell a little bit awry as maybe they tried to be too clever with some yeah. of the tactical changes. Yeah. If yeah. you're Team Kieran right now and you're, da you're sitting there with David on the sofa, do you feel like you can still play into that you know, that resolution that you had in game number one to try win this well, game? It goes back to what we spoke about beforehand. They, they, they can't seem to get a foothold in it. So they've got to be, oh, oh. there it is. Again, tactical changes seem to be playing into it, but you got to be manager, player. You're in charge of that controller. You're in charge of everything. That's one thing I've definitely noticed. So you got to be thinking tactically, how do we work our, ourselves into this or how do we stem the flow from the US in that first half? The change is certainly playing dividends straight away for, for England. They tie it up at 1-1. Yeah, and as it stands at one each, none of these sides are going to win the series oh, just yet. There's a chance here for oh, it's US. Still there. It's still there. Oh. So, Damien, you're playing centre half. You see your forward messing about like that in the box with an yeah, open goal. What, the, what are you uh, saying? Well, I suppose, first of all, England could have cleared it and they didn't. They ended up losing the ball in their own six yard box and they're Chance. in again. Oh, well, guilty of overplaying maybe just a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. I just, just wonder the US will, will regret not taking that chance. You know, guilt dead chance, six yard box, goal wide open, just took that extra touch and. I wonder will they regret it, but here they come now and just overruns it out of play. England with the throw need to be careful when they put this back into play that they retain possession because if they lose it, USA will get the ball in a very dangerous area. The ball's thrown long and it's won back by USA. Horan now with the ball at feet. Plenty of space to run into. There's support on the wing but electing not to pass the ball just yet maybe just delaying Damien for those attacking players to get in the space but then just running into yeah, trouble I think England made some defensive changes they certainly seem to have more numbers back defending there there wasn't a whole pile of options for the US as that one runs out for a corner I wonder will they go short 
certainly seems to be a tactic, but when, when the defending team only sends one out, why wouldn't you? And he puts this one in, the ball's cleared. Kept alive though, trying to create pressure. Goalkeeper doesn't gather, 50-50. England recover and clear. Getting numbers forward now, England trying to create a chance as the ball's played, but it's going to be won back by England, but the defender keeps a bit of composure, wins the ball back. Oh, USA. what a pass, brilliant pass. Finds US player in a pocket, waits for the overlap. Hemp into Stanway, they've got a runner just ahead. The ball will be played through and there's a bit of a foot race now towards the edge of the box. England drawing this game, ah, one brilliant. each. But Excellent stuff, wins it back, read it like a book. Unfortunately, just turn it over there, Stephanie. <laughs> but a name drop in there as a chance is given away. <laughs> oh, Oregon. brilliant. Excellent stuff. Yeah, lucky. 20 minutes to go. See if we can find a winner here. England certainly have more of a, a say in the second half than they did in the first. Oh, Oof. risky pass. Very nearly got cut out. Oh, great ball. Lovely touch. Ah, oh, wonderful. Unlucky. Nice one-touch play there from the US, working it wide inside. Third man run, but well defended by England. Yeah, US, I must say the US defenders have been incredible in this game. Defended so much better than they did in the first game. Nice ball played forward there. Chance now with the shot, but it's going to be blocked by the defender when there was two players. Yeah, there was a 2v1 on the back post, you're right. I wonder if you could got their head up and worked that, they would have had a better opportunity. Not too many England players flooding forward in, in the attacks. I've certainly noticed that, taking their time and getting there. They've had 1v1s, but not enough support. Can they work it? Oh, step to the oh, side brilliant. shot. Oh, brilliant. Was, <laughs> was that you? Yeah. Exceptional stuff. Team USA, again, another lead given up. And tactically, they need to make some changes because this is it. They only got 10 minutes or so to get themselves back in it. And if you're, uh, if you're watching the tactical setup from the English side, Damien, they're telling a lot of these players to start coming back on defenses. They definitely look to, you know, to hold what they have. Yeah, they made that mistake in the first game, though. Dave said in the in the, the post-match interview that when they got nose in front, they went a little bit defensive, invited too much pressure. And Ireland, uh, Romania got the nose in front and they were quite fortunate to, to, to get back in and win it. So we'll see. There's only 10 minutes to go on this game. Team Kieran just 10 minutes away from winning the inaugural Bring Your A Game Cup USA, led by Tyrone and Stephanie. They need to really reach deep now if they want to stay inside the fixture. Just seven in-game minutes to go, and that will go by in the blink of an eye. But look at England. There's just no space. The, the midfield will a good driven ball played through, and maybe oh. there will be a chance. Oh, brilliant. Excellent. And yes, you're quite right. So many defenders back. England just sitting on their their lead, and they invited that pressure. Made the exact same mistake in the in the first game, and now they're changing to go more on the front foot. I certainly think England were were much better for that second half period when they had the attackers on the pitch. Yeah. <laughs> well, the U.S. side now they were constant pressure there in the tactics to really put it towards England to try get the leveler, and now that the sides are the score is two two. They'll go back more to a more balanced approach. Five minutes left to go, and Damon, I think this is where concentration really kicks in the last oh, couple of minutes go, of the game. Here we go. Nice little ball inside there. Can they work it again with a drag back ball? Oh, what a save. Super chance. Two big saves now the USA yeah. goalkeeper's made. Short corner again by England. Uh, harmless into the side and goalkeeper had that one covered. Can we find a winner? Two in-game minutes left. Neither side really pushing too hard to win this one as we enter the 90th minute. There'll be one minute of added time to see if one of these sides can steal a win before we go to extra time. 
and there we'll be going to extra time. So you know, this is where fatigue for the players does come in. You look at the stamina bars of a lot of these players, Damien, and they're starting to look a little bit low. Yeah, I mean, look, the, both teams have got an opportunity now, do they change tactic, get more attackers on the pitch and really go and try and win it. I think the United States need that win to take it to that third and final game. England certainly toying with their tactics in, in both games. We'll see how it plays out. Do you want penalties, Damien? Um, penalties is a very, very tough way to, to decide a game, but you have to have a winner. It'll be exciting for the viewer at home. But I think there's, both teams have enough to, to, to get a goal in extra time, so hopefully we will get a, a winner. Throw is taken. Possession won back by England now, just inside the USA half. Ball played forward to Mead. Oh, Mead chance, plays to chance. Stanway. Good oh, what a block. Incredible block. Shut that window very, very quickly. And it is kind of the role of that defender, isn't it? To cut off the far side of the net because the goalkeeper, it's his job, nothing goes in that near post. Yeah, it's, it's just like real life defending. It's your job to cut off one side and, and, and the goalkeeper the other. England now winning the ball back high up the pitch and putting the US under pressure. Can they work an opening here? Plenty of attackers in, in, in good positions. Well worked again. And superb defending again from the US. They really have been good at that tonight. Can they counter now? USA trying to get bodies forward as the ball is played through and they've got a, two players up on the, the back line of England. Ball played out to the wing, possession stays in, but at the last second it just goes out for a throw and there was a chance there, Damien. Yeah, I'm disappointed there because they had a lot of green grass in front of her. Opportunity to create a chance, but unfortunately just overran it. Risky one across the face of goal there from, from England. One back again by the US. Yeah. Lavelle has a lot of space and there's two players in the box, but the pass played just a little bit early. A little early. bit early, yeah. Had a lot more room to run into and give the attacking players a better opportunity. Again, the USA, really, really impressed with them defensively. Winning the ball back again in the middle third. Unfortunately, it didn't come off that time. The one thing I will say, Damien, is the USA side... They've done a good job at one player always pressing and the other yeah. player tracking the run yeah. behind. Yeah, they look the livelier team. They look more um, more athletic, more more dominant. The ball recoveries will be sky high and they've worked really, really well. But here we go. Last half of the extra time. Can we get a winner? So at this point of a game, a tactic that people would use in FIFA quite a bit and it's something you see managers do in real life too is you bring on the speedsters, the players who are going to really force the issue and get in behind. Yeah, absolutely. But speedsters are usually only speedsters going in one direction and mm -hmm. they often don't run back. So you can leave yourself vulnerable um, this late in the game with tired legs, players with the energy bar, as you said, down quite low. Mistakes will be made. So getting the balance right of, of trying to go and win the game, but making sure that you don't leave the back door open. Um, wonderful ball again. Those US defenders have been very, very impressive. Step over there as it looked to drive in towards the back line, but it's well defended again by Team Tyrone. Ball played across. Now England trying to stretch the pitch just a little bit with players running in behind, but good defensive awareness again from the side of Team Kieran. Ball Great played ball. forward. Great ball, nice little pocket found there. Our referee certainly looked like a foul from where we were. You know yourself, referees never get anything wrong, Damien. Well, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so we're entering the final five minutes of this one, 115 minutes almost played. So that's the hall that separates us oh, from extra oh, time. But steel, USA? 2v2. Two two. Can they? Oh, it's good. oh. Big mistake, but there's Big no mistake, support. Such, that's the late, you know, the late in the game, tired legs, works it brilliantly. Oh, what a drag back. Unlucky. Penalty. A, oh, penalty. Oh, let's have a look at this. No. Wow. That's a very, 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 very soft decision. Thought it looked like a good block from where I was. So Stephanie's taking it. Pressure on right now. This penalty, the big chance for Stephanie. 
The bar's been hit. She makes change direction and the keeper <laughs> saves it, Damien. Stephanie went down the middle. Goalkeeper read it. Always not a good look when you go down the middle with only pace. Can they still get a win in 119 minutes? They've got three players in the boxes that are across to come. Cut back comes Surely out the ball. Yes! <laughs> well done, Steph, was that you? Was that you? <laughs> Tyrone looked like he was going to kill you there. <laughs> Went a little left, just didn't go all the way to the corner. So we get ready now. Well, uh, super for the fans. Winner takes all in the third game. Momentum, as I said, at the top of the show, huge now. So now we see a little bit of there chance, but no. Nope. Game's done. The one thing I will say is that was a much tighter game. Absolutely. Than the first one. Yeah, much better showing from Team Tyrone. Stephanie really getting the hang of this game now. She's look, look at her over there, really proud of herself. <laughs> I think we, we judged it too quickly, Steph. <laughs> well, we get ready for the third game, which will be France against Germany. Or sorry, it'll be Germany against Brazil. Yeah. Now, Brazil are a side that a lot of people are looking at in the World Cup as well, as one yeah. that could potentially go and win it all. Yeah. Which of these two teams? If you were to be playing in the, the server right now, which would you rather have? Oh, Brazil. Everybody, you know, just for the, the style, the way they go about it. You know, obviously the Germans are a very, very good team as well. But Brazil, I think Brazil hold a, a special place in most people's heart just for the, the type of football that they play and the way they approach the game, the carefree nature that they have towards football. Germans at times can be a little bit harsh and, and, and not so easy on the eye. So um, who, I'm, not, I'm not sure who's Brazil and who's Jordan, Team Kieran's Germany. Looks that way, but last time, you know, one of the last uh, times he's played. I think there's been a late change here. Belgium might be. I think they're still trying to decide who's who, Damien. But no, I think. I think <laughs> <laughs> well, with that, guys, we're going to jump into a quick break. When we come back, we'll have game three. Every player has that one thing they need to compete at the highest level. What's yours? Bring your A-game with 99.9% .9 broadband reliability. Virgin Media. Bring on amazing. Every player has that one thing they need to compete at the highest level. What's yours? Bring your A-game with 99.9% .9 broadband reliability. Virgin Media. Bring on amazing. For every gamer and every esports player, you need to put in a lot of hours, a lot of grind. You need to have some amount of natural ability, but it, it will never just carry you through. I mean, uh, professional gaming is so competitive. You need to be fully focused. I think you need a lot of mental toughness. I train, I practice, I get better, and I compete. It's a 99% mental game and 1% skill based game. You need to believe in yourself that you can win the big tournaments and that you can compete against the best players in Europe and the world. We have our internet broadband, our PS5, our gaming chairs, our monitors. We need that to bring our A game to the table and win as many games as possible. Game number two, the sides are level at one match apiece. But for everyone at home, it really looked like that last one could have been snuck away by England. Yeah, uh, I'm not really sure what happened, you know, the corner. It was a bit of a corner tactic. I, I know what happened, partner. Go on. The fans at home want to see three games, so we yeah. let them win. Make it a bit more dramatic. Listen, when I we said just make be, a bit more dramatic. When they said there'd be no dramas, I, I was told uh, we have to have some drama apparently uh, for the show. But uh, this time, definitely no dramas. One hundred percent. Kieran was told to give away a penalty, so we gave them a penalty. You know, I mean, we gave them a hundred and twenty-minute winner. You know yourself. That's that's the, the streamer in you there, isn't it? Looking for more content to make the game a little bit better. But going into this third one, it's just winner takes all from this point on. You're going to be playing with the Germany side. Are you happy with that decision? Yeah, well, last time we played against Germany, we beat them 1-0 with Ireland, so we'll hopefully they can perform a little bit better than this. A couple of good results for Ireland against Germany in competitive games down the, down the years, hasn't there been? So that's it from Team Kieran. But let's talk 
to Team Tyrone. 119th minute, penalty taken by Stephanie Roach. 119th minute, penalty missed by Stephanie Roach. But from the, you know, from the keeper's save, the ball was won back. How much relief was there when you scored that goal at the end? Yeah, there was huge relief, I'm not going to lie. I, uh, yeah, I got my penalty all wrong and thankfully got the opportunity to redeem myself. And for Tyrone, you know, you stepped your game up a little bit in that last one. You were able to back the words at the start of the show. This is it, though. This is you against Kieran, Last game of the series to take bragging rights within the Org of Wild. How excited are you for this? Very excited. Me and him have been here before in the League of Ireland, and I obviously came out on top, and hopefully I'll come out on top here now today and win. Well, confident words there, but we're not going to make this delay any longer. We're going to jump into a couple of seconds break. When we come back, we'll have game number three of the series. So we, here we are, Damien. This is it, the third and final game of the series. Little change to the schedule. It won't be Brazil. It'll be England playing on the side of Gain. So Germany, England, though, another historic game. Yeah, absolutely. Game with so much history and uh, importance to it. Um, it'll be interesting to see how both teams setting up there. I was just trying to catch a glimpse. Germany setting up with a flat 4-4-2 and Thomas Muller on the right wing of all places. Interesting to see that, see how the team Tyrone counteract that. Um, we're ready to get going. I think one thing that you'd definitely be happy with if you're Germany is the fact you've Neuer on goal as well. He's a bit of a behemoth yep. in the sticks, and I think, you know, both in game and in real life, Pickford has his moments. Yeah, absolutely. But Germany on the front foot straight away. Certainly, Team Kieran look to prefer the winger's option. You know, they, they do play with it. I'm not sure why Thomas Muller is over on the right wing at his age and his lack of legs. I don't think he'll give you the penetration you want. He's all normally better in the number 10 role. Here come England, Rudiger. I think though maybe the one thing we could say is the way the team here on play, pace hasn't really been key in either of the three games down the wings. It's been about good positioning and good mm -hmm. space. That's the one thing about Thomas Muller. He's got really good attack position and he knows how to find space. Okay, yeah, fair enough. I know I get it, but it's just Thomas Muller is a goal scorer. You want him in between the width of the goal when crosses are coming in. Oh, what a chance. What a wonderful ball in there from, from Declan Rice. I think it was Sterling with the header. Couldn't quite get it on target. Great kick out there. Good distribution as there's a chance now for Germany on the ball, but it's played back to Kerr. Hoffman now on the wing, plays it inside the Timo Werner. Plays a good driven ball into Sani. Sani cuts inside. He's got oh, a chance, but he stepped up back. for him. Oh, wow. The gap appeared, but he just had a drag back too many. You see this all the time in competitive FIFA and in, re in football too. Players trying to be too clever whenever the easy oh, option's there. Just, you just go for the goal. Oh, what a turn that was from Sterling. Really prominent in the early stages of this one. But again, an uptick in, in quality from the, the second game again. Germany driving down the wing. Sani makes a diagonal run inside. The ball's played to Werner now again, but he's just crowded out by England defensive midfielder. Oh, Harry Kane, what a ball. And there's Raheem, one-on-one, -on -one. must be. Brilliant finish. Goal! And that's just Harry yeah, Kane. Made me absolutely. Harry Kane dropping deep into the pocket. Super little turn. And he, s and he slipped it in. It didn't matter. Sterling, one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, I'm with you, Steph. <laughs> and you know, you think of anybody who you know, knew to play to the whistle, it would be David Myler. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think he could have done much anyway. Sterling with his pace, half the pitch to run into. There's a lovely little slip ball. Whether he stopped or not, it makes no difference. With a lovely touch uh, to take it across the defender and neat and tidy finish. Germany with it all to do. And that's the thing, Harry Kane for Spurs and in FIFA with his position as well. He's got this habit and real knack of picking up the ball between the lines and you know, then picking out a final pass. How difficult is it to play against someone like that? Oh, it's very difficult, but when Harry Kane drops deep, they always have the, the, the option of the runner in behind. That's what England had there. You know, if he drops deep and, and Raheem Sterling doesn't make that run, here come Germany again. Oh, Another good, good opportunity. 1-1, one, one, wonderful. Again, the, back, the centre back's just disappearing for England. Oh, parting ways there and massive gaps. But again, a good finish. 
Sané reads the play and it's played forward now to Gnabry, who just scored the equaliser for Germany. He's got space ahead of him in the box, but the touch is heavy. Tries to cut it back to the edge, but it's well read by England. And now another chance to maybe build an attack. End to end, much more open game this. Lots of chances. Certainly more level than the, the first two games. Chilwell to Phillips. He's got space out on the wing. Another player maybe not used to finding the ball on the touchline, but he manages to take it past one. It does brilliant. Really, really well to work that. Oh, the, oh. the touch, the save. <sighs> I thought it might have been a push in the box there. Harry Kane went to ground, didn't get it, but it's still fashioned a chance. England winning the ball back. And here they come again. Reminder, this is it. The winner of this game will win the Bring You Your A Game Cup. England plays it out offside, wide, hint of yeah, offside. And yeah, offside, he, was... he did, yeah. Oh, here come the first raft of changes. Trying to keep an eye on both teams here. Calvin Phillips playing left wing back. Be interesting to see where he brings Saka in instead of him. Put Foden up front. Kane in the 10 position. Yeah. Much more pace now on that left wing with Bakary Saka, or Saka instead, of, instead of Calvin Phillips. What do you think of the decision by... Well, oh, they're in again, it's... Germany. Oh, oh, what a save. After you just criticised Pickford. Big save. Wonderful save. And Declan Rice done brilliant there. Does that job so well. Screen in front of the back four. So one thing England are doing, Team Tyrone, they play five at the back. Every single game so far. What do you think of the decision to play Chilwell? You know, a more natural wing back. In the, in the, as the third centre back. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not averse to that. I think it's 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 not the the worst decision in the world. You know, they obviously have a lot more mobility than the natural centre backs, um, and again, they have the ability to step in. I think that's key when you play three at the back. That the outside centre backs have to have the the freedom to step in, and and create problems for the opposition midfield. And when you play full backs in those positions, you can do that as opposed to natural centre backs. As they get another chance again, it's the third time. Oh, great yeah, finish. there's definitely something wrong there in the England defence, the way they worked that from the right side across. When you have three centre-backs, centre-forwards can't get that much space on the edge of your own box. Germany 2-1. 2-1 lead as we get close to half-time now, as there's very little football left to be played. Werner will run down the wing. He's got absolute bunches of pace now to carry the ball, but he'll wait for support. Plays at the Kerrer. Another fantastic young player coming from Germany. Gozens now. On the wing, inside the Musiala, to Sani, oh, in take. towards Kimmich. Kimmich with the shot, but see Pickford, man of the match. Brilliantly worked from Germany, that one. Pickford, another world-class save. Short corner taken, played towards Kimmich now, inside the Sani, but he cuts back in towards the pressure. Gnabry retains possession, though, for Germany. Kimmich cuts inside, plays the Offside. ball through to Sani. To be, yeah. And it's half time. Yeah. Keeper's the story of the day, though. Neuer's yeah. made a big save and Pickford's made ah, two. Pickford's made two world class saves there. I wonder what changes England might look to make here. Again, they made that switch. Pine Maguire into midfield. Surely not. I think, I think we're going to see <laughs> Bellingham coming on here instead. <laughs> so, as we watch this again, a lot of tactical changes made at half Absolutely, time. yeah. And, and it seems to be on the back of tactical changes, you know, there's, there's an immediate uh, uptick in, in ascendancy and goals are conceded straight away. Um, so that just shows how important it is to recognise that and then the opposition team have to deal with it. Bellingham is going to come on to the fray, as is Jack Grealish. Sterling now running towards the byline, cuts it back, trying to make some space to keep possession. Kyle Walker now plays it into Mason Mount. Mason Mount, maybe a hint of a foul there, yeah. but it's not given by the ref, and Germany win the ball back. Positive start to the half from, from England. They need it. Sani with acres of space ahead of him, driving towards the byline again. Cuts it back inside, but Werner cannot get the touch, and England win possession Good again. Good defending Kyle Walker there. Got to stop that shot really, really quickly, and Pickford tidied it up. Oh, nice turn. Looking for an option, looking for a pass. Not a whole pile on at the moment, so he might as well keep going himself. Great run. Our oh, referee had to be. Good ball played forward. Werner now again. Get 
gets inside the box. Ball rolls inside. Oh, Declan Rice, super stuff. And picks a wonderful pass as well and sets England on the attack. Good ball played out to the wing. Saka now running down. Star for Arsenal playing some fantastic football at the moment. Cuts back inside. Plays the ball in towards Jack Grealish. Jack Grealish driving towards the six yard box, but big save from Neuer breaks oh. and he hits the bar. <laughs> Oh, you'd be disappointed after yeah, that one. Yeah, great move. It all came from Declan Rice one over here in the left-back position, and they moved the ball to the thirds really, really quickly and fashioned a chance. You know, you can say it was unlucky, but it was a gaping goal. Had to score it. Unfortunately, couldn't keep the shot down, hit the crossbar and comes back out. Yeah, and that was a big chance for England. Team Kieran trail this fixture now. Ball played forward. Werner inside the box has a great chance and... Oh, he just doesn't have the composure to hit the target. Yeah, absolutely. He presented himself, kind of sums up Werner's time when he was at Chelsea as well. Lots of opportunities, couldn't quite score. Ball won back by England, trailing 2-1 with just over 25 minutes left to play. England get possession, Stone. Maybe an unnatural position over on that right wing. Plays the ball through over the top. And it's a foot race here between Sterling and Rudiger. And a bit of strength shown as the ball goes out for a throw oh, into England. England, England at the throw in as well. Mm -hmm. Chilwell plays it inside. Won by Musiala. Fantastic young player, that kid. Yeah, too, yeah. Even in this World Cup now, Germany seemed very reliant on him playing well. Uh, Werner again with a strike from a, a, an awkward angle. Probably be better off having another touch and trying to find a teammate in the edge of the box with a pullback there. Very, very difficult to score from that angle. Kyle Walker carrying it out of defence, plays at the Declan Rice. Yeah, Germany good. putting a three man press here at the forward line, but. Chilwell manages to dr just dribble his way out of trouble. Plays the ball through. Oh, That's a good ball. ball. Oh, he's offside again. Oh, here comes changes. England need to do something. Maybe Harry Maguire midfield might be a good idea. <laughs> I'd say uh, much like the real, uh, much like the World Cup, if Harry Maguire ends up playing in midfield, there's probably something wrong. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Couldn't quite see what they did there. Gnabry now over onto the right wing. I think that's a smart switch from, from the Germans. Yeah, I think they were playing Gnabry through the middle, trying to create opportunities, you know, isolate on the pace. Yeah. But it didn't really come to work that way. So I think putting Thomas Muller, a more natural player when it comes to picking up positions and making smart runs. Yeah, Thomas Muller's a finisher, you know. He, that's his, his best attribute of scoring goals and popping up in the right position. I always felt he was wasted out here on the, on the right side of midfield, but the lads will argue they're winning 2-1 and after 75 minutes, so they were, they were justified in their selection. Here come Germany again, Kimmich. Oh, there's a man through. Excellent. Chance now for Germany. Gozens, but he tried to slip it inside. Pickford, man of the match, keeping England in this right now. 10 minutes to go. Run triggered to go through. This is a chance for England, but the touch is heavy and Rudiger wins back possession. 10 minutes to go now in the Bring Your A Game oh, Cup Final. Germany are in. Chance. Werner again. Werner, it's another big save from Pickford. And the rebound is saved again, and it's a corner. But chance after yeah, chance. Werner, Werner's got to take at least one of those chances. He's had five or six. Can't quite get it in the net, but let's give Pickford credit. You know, he's made some really, really good saves tonight. Sani, ball rolling his way out of trouble. He's got acres of space inside the box. Going to continue rolling the ball as he looks for an option. But it's one back by England. Five minutes to go. Mount has got two players making the same run down the line. And you need to maybe stretch the field a bit more. Played forward to Phil Foden. But it's oh, one well back by done. Sula. Brilliant. Resolute from Sula. Standing his ground. No way through. Into the dying seconds. Now need a miracle from England. Wouldn't put a pass this game having needed no, on a penalty, would not. you? No. Chance though for Germany. Sane, he's got a man in the box, but he'll drive towards the goal line. Hits the shot, but it's blocked. And that's another big chance for Germany as we okay. enter the 89th minute. Still have possession. It's Werner. No panic. Werner runs it out over the end line. Can't believe he's still on the pitch, Werner, after what he's given the lads. Two minutes added time to go. 
Kyle Walker plays it back to Stones for England. They need to find a chance and they need to find it now as it's played forward. And it's going to be won back by Germany again. And with just 10 seconds left to go, all you got to do is keep possession. England win it back, but Germany know win the second ball, kick it out of play, and the ref blows the final whistle, Damien, as we have our first ever Bring Your A Game champions. Yeah, absolutely. The lads did really, really well. Their second half performance there for Germany was brilliant. But in fairness to Tyrone and Stephanie, they gave it a, a really good goal. Uh, Steffi can be very, very proud of her after we all slaughtered her beforehand, saying that she wasn't going to be very good. But they made a game of it, and in fairness, it was very, very close. It was a very good performance over the three games. One game maybe not so tight, but the other two games are a little bit tighter. So I'm going to ask you, player of the match over the course of the three games? Uh, Stephanie, I think she's done great. You know, after missing the penalty late in the, uh, late in the second game to, to redeem herself and to score the, the winner in extra time was brilliant. And uh, they made a real good goal over there in the final. And uh, it could have went either way, but both teams did really, really well. Really good performance, you got to say. And it was a great way to uh, kick off our inaugural Bring Your A Game Cup. And the thing is, you have winners, but you also have losers. So, you know, we're going to call them over. Come on, guys. Let's, let's get Team Kieran in here and we'll have a little bit of a chat. Runners up. Let's go. Let's have a wee chat. Bring them in. So, Tyrone, Stephanie. Didn't quite go the way as we're planning to in that one. But you brought it all the way to the third match. So, you definitely made a, had a good performance. Yeah, disappointed because that last game, probably the one I hit the bar with, probably should have went in as well. So I feel like I let her on down a little bit. But uh, yeah, I think I think I held my own to a certain extent. Obviously, would have liked to have won, but yeah, happy enough. So Tyrone, you've lost the Kieran. Doesn't happen that often, you know. You, you gave it yourself. You said you won the E football, or you know, won the League of Ireland E tournament very recently. But for yourself, you still put on a good performance. You got to play with one of you know the best players Ireland's ever produced. How much fun was it to play the games here today? No, it was very fun. And listen, Stephanie played well here. That chance there at the end should have went, went in. That's just the game. It's how it is. But um, no, we could be happy with how we played and we just got unlucky. Well, that's football. So before we uh, talk to your winners, I want to see if either of you have any last words you want to say to the viewers at home. Um, yeah, no, just I hope I've done, done everyone proud trying to play the game. Obviously, I'm not as, as good as the other guys, but uh, hopefully I can get a little bit more practice and, and come back next year and compete again against the two lads. <laughs> oh, we'd love to see it. What about you? Anything to say? I just hope they enjoyed the games and all the good goals we scored. Well, there you have it. But guys, there always has to be a winner of these tournaments as well. So we're going to jump to a quick break and then we'll have the trophy ceremony. We'll see you guys in a few minutes. Every player has that one thing they need to compete at the highest level. What's yours? Bring your A-game with 99.9% .9 broadband reliability. Virgin Media. Bring on amazing. And there you have it, guys. The first ever Bring Your A-game cup has been won by Team Kieran, David Mailer, and Kieran, you said a fantastic game in that one, but it was really a, a tight run affair, wasn't it? Um, no, um, simply because we were comfortable in game one, and we were a bit lackadaisical in game two. I think we we just had a little chat there. Uh, we were a bit overconfident, and we tr we basically caused ourselves too many problems. Um, but then we simplified it going into game three, and we were very comfortable. We had a lot of chances that we were. I think we could have won that quite easily. So I'm just delighted that. Kieran has come up Trump against Tyrone. Yeah, and speaking of that, you beat your teammate. Yeah. You've gone ahead to win it. It's bound to feel really good after the matchups you've had in the past. Yeah, no, it does. It does, absolutely. Uh, no, I think we definitely deserved it. I mean, they came at us with some, some odd tactics, the five back, the corners been thrown in. You know, we just had to, we had to get through those moments. And uh, yeah, we did as a team. So it's delighted to win. Definitely. So, well, look, we have two fantastic trophies to give. We've got David here, one of the founders of Wild. And we're going to have Claire pass the other trophy through. So I'm going to step away and let these players enjoy the moment.
So guys, what a tournament we had to kick off the inaugural Bring Your A Game Cup, which was brought to you by Virgin Media with over 99.9% coverage nationwide. It has been a fantastic night here. I want to thank all of the viewers at home. I want to thank our production crew. I want to give a massive thank you to Wild and of course to Virgin Media. I've been Darren Gibson, but guys, bring your A Game. Have a great night and we'll see you all again soon.